All right, I'm so excited for those of you who are joining live, for those of you who might be watching a little bit later. Um, I am going to be sharing all about how we can use Moat combined with Canva. And I'm gonna focus on something that I think will be very applicable for this beginning of the school year in creating a newsletter because good communication with families from the start is super, super important. I think it can make all the difference in your year actually. Um, and I think it's the first step to gaining a student's trust is really getting the parents on board. And so that's what I'm gonna to share today. I'm gonna to share how to make your newsletter, how to make it a little bit more personalized with the power of Moat, how these two wonderful applications work together so seamlessly. Um, and we're gonna have some fun and we're gonna have a special guest drop in at the end. So that's something to look forward to also. Um, I am gonna ask if you're game, if you could join in the Pear Deck. So there is the link that is already in the YouTube that John's put in there. But if you have, if you wanna like join from another device or you haven't seen that link in the chat, go ahead and you can go to joinpd.com and type in this six letter uh, code, no spaces, and you can join in. Even if you're watching on the live stream, you'll be able to join in um, that also later. No worries, I'm not gonna close this out for a little bit. So that's gonna allow you to interact a little bit. Not necessary, if you wanna just watch, totally cool. But if you've seen me present before, you know I use Pear Deck for everything. I like that engagement factor. So let's have some fun. I'm gonna go ahead and start class. You can join at any time. Again, the link is in the chat in YouTube. If we're not connected on Twitter and you're on Twitter, please do connect with me. I'm at BuddyXO. I love chatting that way. And you can ask me any follow-up questions there. I also have a website with more contact info, techymusings.com. All right, let's get started. So we're going to talk about the importance of building trust from the start. And then we're going to get going with Canva newsletter templates and using the power of Moat to make it a little bit more personalized. And then I am going to leave you with a little bit of a goal setting activity. And we're going to do some questions at the end. So a little warm up. I actually found this template right in Canva. Um, I just typed in student check-in as my search term. And this came up and I took a screenshot of it and I added it with some drawing capabilities to Pear Deck for you all to interact with. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna actually join as a student also. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that link. Ooh, I see more people joining, thanks. So I'm gonna show you if you're just watching what it looks like on the student end. So here you have the drawing tools. You can resize your pen. You can change the color. I'm feeling the most excited right now. And you can also use text if you don't have like a pen tool or something. And so that's how that works. Quick little Canva template um, in Pear Deck. Let's go ahead and see how people are feeling inspired, beautiful sunny day, Mocon, it's got you all the way, all the way feeling excited. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited to be here too. I'm so excited you all are excited and feeling energized and great. Um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and move on because I have so much uh, to get through. Oh my God, somebody presented six hours of Microsoft. Whew, that's pretty great. Congrats on that. And I want to give you a moment to set an intention for our time together today. I think this is really powerful. Whenever you're doing anything, I obviously uh, love practicing yoga. This is where I got this idea from. Every time you step onto your yoga mat, you're asked to set an intention. And I think this helps me get the most and also be the most present out of things that I'm doing. So I try and remind myself to set an intention, but also as I'm asking you to set an intention for our time together, it's going to allow me to see what you're hoping to gain from our time together. And so that I can customize my talk to you today. So 
let me see what you're saying. So learning about some of these integrations, more effective communication with families. All right. Um, <laughs> love, see Canva love already. Yes, right there with you. Um, yeah, and hopefully this will be a great way to communicate with parents. And also, you know, we have accessibility that we can talk about too. Um, that's all built in with the power of moat. And it's so simple. So <laughs> yeah, I love that all these tools uh, integrate with one another. It is very powerful. We're going to need a um, moat and Paradox collaboration next. <clears throat> okay, John. <laughs> All right. I wanted to see this person who's writing this last question here, and then I'm going to go ahead and move on. Okay. So mode and Canva work really, really, really well together. Um, so I think from some of these, I think some people haven't seen that integration yet. So I'm excited to share with you how that works. I'm going to go ahead and move on just in the interest of time. So let me start with why is this so important to me? Like, why did I want to talk about this topic when I was asked to propose a session? Um, all right. So I always think that parent communication is super important, but this is uh, this was one memory that lives on for me forever and will always make me pause and think about how I start the beginning of a school year. So I flipped my math instruction back in 2010 and I started with AP Calculus. That was a really challenging math course. Um, the parents had known their children in very challenging math courses in prior years. And so when they got to AP Calculus, they were ready for really difficult math. They were ready for really difficult homework and all of these things. That was kind of the expectation. So when I flipped my classroom, students were actually, my goal was to alleviate the stress and anxiety in the classroom. That was my primary goal for flipping my classroom. And I really was able to achieve, achieve that by flipping AP Calculus. It was immediate from the start, even with parents, they saw that kids were coming home with less homework. They were very happy about it. Now, fast forward two years, and I started flipping my Honors Algebra 2 class. In Honors Algebra 2, many of those students had never had a difficult math class previously. Plus, I'm dealing with ninth and 10th graders, so their parents are more involved. And I explained what the flip classroom was at Back to School Night, but Back to School Night is like, less than 10 minutes, right? Super quick, super fast. Not all parents can come to back to school night either. Sometimes they have multiple kids and they had, you know, maybe they knew me, so they didn't come to my back to school night and they went to somebody else's. So I didn't explain it well enough. In that first month of school, parents had so many questions because their kids were really nervous about this new way of doing math. And the parents were thinking, oh, well now the kids need to learn all the material at home for homework because that's where they learn through the video, which was not at all what the flip classroom it was about for me. It wasn't about my class structure at all. So, you know, there was a big missing gap there. I hadn't explained it well enough to parents. They didn't under understand. So their kids came home, were nervous, they expressed that to their parents and their parents couldn't help their kids understand the goals. So I missed an opportunity there that I needed to patch up. And it took me through October to patch this. Luckily, I put so much time and energy into making sure that I explained it well to parents right then and there so that I was able to build that trust back. But it took a lot of work. So now I'm very careful that I explain my philosophy from the start. And even for parents that can't come to back to school night, remembering that they're getting in so much information during that time too. What I do is I send home a video ahead of time explaining my flipped classroom philosophy. And then I also, at the end of September, sometime in September, I send home a newsletter. And that's what I want to share today because this has been a big game changer for me. So this was a quote from one of the parents um, that they just said, I just didn't understand what you were saying at back to school night. There was so much information being given out. I couldn't process it all. And I got that from a uh, email 
after I had patched up this relationship with this family and also with their student and really gotten them on board. And this actually ended up being one of my students who thrived the most throughout the year, but was so nervous at the beginning of the year, didn't understand how class was running. So this just is proof that, you know, like this newsletter idea for me is going to be something that I do every time I teach a class. And it doesn't have to be as detailed as the one I'm going to show you, but I'm going to show how to make it easy. Um, to me, uh, you know, in my experiences, families just want to know that their children are being take, well taken care of, that we care about them as individuals, that we are kind of customizing what we do in the classroom for our specific class and that we are clearly communicating expectations with them. Um, and I think that intentionality is super important. And I can make sure that I get all that across by sending home just a simple newsletter. All right. So here's a little bit of what my newsletter looks like. So here it is in Canva. Um, I went with a super simple look on this one. Usually I actually do more designy things in Canva, but for this one, I just wanted something that looked professional, that looked clean, and I also had a lot of information. Now, this specific one was for my online AP Calculus class where I had a lot of tools that I needed to explain to families. And I want to share this one with you so you can get a sense of like what one that why I use certain tools that I use. And also like, this is the most detailed, this is more detailed than you would be probably. But again, this is for an online class I was teaching. So I thought I needed some more detail. But as you can see here, like I have the, I designed this one myself personally, because I just made it very simple. But usually I start with templates and I'm going to share that in a second. But you know, like the line tools are here. There's great background tools here. There's all different fonts. Um, I designed this with different text boxes. So you can see that I have a text box here to make it small. Then I put my, my um, video, embedded it right in here because Canva accepts all different types of embeds just by pasting in the URL, which we're going to talk more about. So this is a text box. This is another text box. That's kind of how I uh, arrange things on Canva. And you can see this one's multi-page. I have a lot here explaining each of these tools. And then at the end of this one, I dropped in a little voice note so that families can listen to it also. Now, the, there's a lot of power in the moat in embedding it like this, especially for accessibility. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like on the parent end. So to do that, I just press the share link and I use the view only link. I copy that. And on the parent end, it's going to look like this. So it looks, I really like the look of Canva too, because it like looks like a magazine. And all of these, you can see right there, the video just embeds right in there. So I don't need them to go out to an external site. They can watch it right there as they're reading the newsletter. So here we go. Let's look at what the moat looks like. Hi, let me start off by saying thank you for taking the time. So there, of course, we can play it, right? Let me zoom in a little bit because I want to show some other features here. So first of all, there's the playback speed. So you can change the playback speed. You can speed it up a little bit. You can slow it down. And the slowing down might be helpful for certain families. Also great for certain students. I love that there's the 0.8x speed. I also love that there's the 1.2 and 1.5 right there. Now they can also, if they need to, go back a little bit. There's a five second going back. They can adjust the volume, of course, down there. But something else that's available is translation. And that might be something that you need for different families. So using a moat voice note auto transcribes and translates. So let's say that we want Greek. Let's go ahead and do that. And you can see what it looks like. And to read this newsletter, I'm so excited. So it's going to still be my voice, but the transcription will be played back in a different language. So that is really powerful too. And something that I love about this. So let's go back to my slides real quick. And we're going to get in in one second, and I'm going to show you how you can use the um, templates that are in Canva. All right, so we're going to dive in. 
How many of you have used Canva before I keep talking? Okay, so most of you have used Canva. All right, but I do see somebody saying, what is Canva? So we're gonna share more about what Canva is at the very end um, and how to get on and make sure that you're in as an educator because that's very important. As an educator, you get free access to all the Canva goodness and so do your students. So um, this is what Canva looks like. And so, you know, usually I, you can see here, I have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of things that I make in Canva and usually I make them a little bit more fancy. Like this is one where I like share, I also do speaking and professional development. So, you know, usually I make it a little bit fancier like this, but for parents, I just wanted something super simple. Um, but you can get, you can have fun with them, have a lot of fun with them. Um, but get started with some templates. So you can just go in here and type in like newsletter. And you can take one that you like, you like the look of. Um, let's see, let's, this one is super fancy. Um, I love that, I might end up choosing that one. Let's just go with this one. It's kind of in the middle. It has some design stuff, but also it's not too busy. So you just click on it and then you can customize it as much as you want. So we can go ahead and, you know, you can change the font. If you don't like that font, maybe you don't like the color. You can just change the color here. And what I love too, is that Canva gives you these color palettes. And I think that's very powerful. And I just want to express that here. The photo colors are right there. So you can quickly and easily find colors that complement whatever else is in, um, is in here. So that is really nice. All right. Let me go ahead and show you the can the moat integration now so that we have time for Q&A too. So here are the templates. Let's go ahead and just go up to moat. So you use the moat uh, extension. So you do need to make sure that it's like pinned. Always keep your moat icon pinned. I think that's a good idea. And then you record your voice note just using the Chrome extension, okay? That's the first step. Let's click on record. Hello everyone, I hope you're enjoying this session of MoopCon so far. There we go. Then here, go ahead and you can click on your moat so you can see the transcription. Hello everyone, I hope you're enjoying this session of MoopCon so far. Well, moat doesn't know MoopCon yet. So let's go ahead and revise that and then save it. So now I have the transcription right all that goodness. And it was already copied. The link was already copied, but if it wasn't, let me do that a little slower. If you click on the share icon, you can go ahead and just copy that link again. You can also get the QR code here, which could be handy. Why don't we grab the QR code? Let's go ahead and do that right now at the same time. So now when we go back to Canva, all you have to do is this. Ready for it? Click anywhere. That's not a text box. Paste. I just press command V to paste. And boom, it's embedded. That's it. Like it embeds automatically. You can also go to the um, embed option, like in the sidebar, you see that embeds. You can also paste it there, but you don't even need to go that far. You can just like click anywhere on your canvas and command V, it will paste in. Here we go. I can resize it, put it anywhere that I want, and then you could even pull in your QR code. I just am dragging and dropping it in. And there is a QR code. You might want a QR code, especially for, um, you know, a back to school night type of a newsletter. Maybe you want to print them out and send them home. You can, and then add the little QR code so that parents can listen to the voice note. But here we go. That's it. That's how easily it embeds right here. And then as soon as parents would press the button to play, automatically we get that transcription going. And I love the look of, especially of the moat integrated into Canva because we see that transcription going as you're talking. All right, so let's see what else I have. So we're gonna have a special guest drop in in a second who's gonna share more about 
setting up your free teacher account. So I'm going to skip in that video. I'm going to skip that slide for right now. But if you want a tutorial from me and you have these slides, um, that is available right here. I have a little bit of a tutorial. Now, uh, these are just some steps that you can use to get going when you're ready. I would say choose your Canva template to use as your base and then design your newsletter in Canva however you want. Record your voice note or notes. You can record more than one. It doesn't just need to be one. You might want to have an intro and a conclusion. Optionally, you can insert that QR code or two. And then you can share your newsletter. So how do you share your newsletter? That's the last step. Again, you would go over here to share. And then I like to give that view only link. And then copy that. And that's what you would send in maybe an email home to parents, whatever. And another thing is that you can actually click here on the insights and you can get analytics on if parents have actually viewed this, you can see engagements and stuff like that. Obviously I just made this one, so I have no engagement. So let's see what else we have. We're getting close to the end of our time together. I am looking at the clock. Um, how are we feeling? Do you have any questions so far? I have not been looking at the chat, so I don't even know what you're saying in there. If you can add some here and I'll take a quick look at the chat. Okay, I can't keep up with the chat. So John, I'm gonna need you to uh, tell me what happened there. Hi, Stacey. No, I can just see that there's lots of lots of fun going on in the chat. People people saying some wonderfully warm and positive things about, as we all know, Canvas is su such a great tool. So um, that there have been one or two uh, little phrases going on every day. I'm canvassing from uh, Katie. I know that there are people blown away by the fluency with which you can um, showcase all sorts of tools simultaneously. Um, but in terms of questions to answer. Um, I think there might be one or two um, about how people can get going and start uh, signing up with Canva, but not specifically about anything that you've just demonstrated. All right. Sounds great. Um, all right. We're almost done. I'm going to give a couple of reflection questions and then we're going to uh, let on our special guest. Okay. Oh, I saw a question here. Does a parent need Canva for this? No, absolutely not. You just share that link, that URL, and anybody can view that with that URL. They do not need to have Moat. They do not need to have uh, Canva. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and move these slides into student pace. If you have any um, type of a parent newsletter, if you want to share that, please leave it in this Pear Deck. And I'll be sure to share out some highlights on um, Twitter too for anybody who wants to see that after this session. So I'm not gonna pause here because we don't have time, but if you do leave it in here and I'll be sure to share out your newsletter um, if you'd like it shared. I'd love to see other ones. So I think reflection is really important. We don't have that much time for it. This is one of my favorite quotes. I always share it whenever I, I try and always share it whenever I speak a little inspiration about the power of giving students time to reflect at the end of class before they move on to the next thing. I know we have a really short session today, but I'd love for you to stay in this Pear Deck and for you to, at the close, after we finish, to maybe reflect a little bit on your time at MoCon, what you've gotten out of it. And I will be, I'm going to wait, I'll wait 24 hours, but if you are on this, Within 24 hours, you're going to get all these slides and all your responses emailed to you as Pear Deck takeaways. So you can go ahead and do some of your reflection right in this Pear Deck. I'll also be able to see it, but nobody else will be able to see it except for me. And then you'll get that email to you. So it'll allow you to look back on this throughout the year and remember what you got from MoatCon, uh, what you got from this session today, and maybe do a little bit of goal setting too. So I left you a little goal setting template. And so what you can do is you can click on this. What it's, It is a template in uh, Canva that I've found, and you can just press use this template. And when you press use this template, it's going to make your own copy. So it's only going to be yours. And you can go ahead and you can add in action steps. You can add in goals. You can add in notes. 
And please do make sure that you're practicing using Moat for some of it. So maybe your notes, you just wanna orally do that. Maybe your action steps, you wanna type them. You can go ahead and go over to the text and type in some of those. Play with this. I think this will be a great area to play with the ideas um, that we talked about today. Uh, also, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about me, I just had the extreme honor of doing a TED Ed educator talk. And I really talk about how we can use just very simple um, tech tools to empower all learner voices. And I'd love for you to check out that talk. It's just 12 minutes. And then this is just credit to the artwork that I used throughout here. Um, and now you can ask questions here in the Paradox if you want it anonymous, okay? If you don't want other people to see what your question was, you can leave it in the Paradox. If you're comfortable, go ahead and leave it in the YouTube chat. And let's let on our special guest to close us out. Stacey, before we bring a special guest on, I just want to say um, on behalf of everyone at Moat, everyone joining in the chat on YouTube, everyone extended a conversation across social media. Thank you so much. Like, honestly, the way that you share and and it's so appropriate, the with heart bit, because it's so evident in all that you say and all that you share that it is coming from a place of real authenticity. And I know that you and I have spoken about this and the importance of that previously. And just before we bring this guest on, I'm really excited to bring on. I just wanted to make sure that that, that, that came across and that, that was clear and that that was expressed in as in its um yeah in its fullness just as it should be so thank you stacy thank you it means a lot very much perfect okay so we do have a special guest on um he's not been overly covert in the youtube chat i would i would say so um the special guest that we are bringing on it is a wonderful special guest to have and i'm delighted to welcome scott noons from canva hi scott Hey, everyone. Uh, great to be here, John. Thanks, Stacy. Way to kill it, by the way, Stacy. Uh, I love it. You know, you have uh, this amazing device agnostic tool, Canva. You have another device agnostic tool, Moat. You can use either um, on any device. Parents don't necessarily need to log in or have an account to be able to experience these great tools. And I love how both are embedded together to be better together with such ease. And I, I love the newsletters. When I was with the district, I got a lot of value out of those parent teacher newsletters or admin to staff newsletters or admin to community stakeholders. So awesome topic. Great, great. Yes, it was, um, there, there are lots, there's lots of positive vibes coming your way, Stacey. So, so I know after that you, you, you'll be able to really appreciate those. Um, there, there were one or two questions, Scott, I'm sure that you saw that were, uh, the teachers were asking how they could get involved and, and how they could join up and um, make, take, take the appropriate next steps. I know you shared a link with me. Would now be a good time for me to share that into the... Yeah, and I actually just dropped it in the oh. YouTube chat as well. But if you could show it on the screen, I don't know no, if you're able no to No problem at all. No problem uh, at all. And with that link, that's how you can sign up. There's a link in there to sign up. Or if you have questions ahead of time, if you're wondering all the different accounts, what do they do? That's kind of what I do for Canva. I'm a district engagement advocate. So I went from supporting over 100 tools at the district level to supporting this one amazing tool. And I couldn't be happier. So I'm happy to guide you individually or your school or district along your Canva journey and answer any questions and um, just load you up with resources, right? Stacy's a great resource. Make sure you're following her on Twitter. You could follow me on Twitter at Mr. Noons Teach um, or on any social channel, just uh, search that up. And uh, I know I saw some questions in there too. Um, I think one I saw was, you know, with, with the parent thing, but then also just signing up like what more can you do with canva really i love to say if you can dream it you can do it with canva so like a kind of a, a plus one to stacy there's also analytics within canva to where you can see how many views you're getting on these newsletters so you can try different things and if they do have a canva account and log in then you can see who's actually seeing it and then you'll see it in increments of seven, 
30 and 90 days and then all time. So that's really neat if you want to track kind of how deep your newsletter is penetrating your your audience. Like, is it really reaching them? Are they really reading it? And then um, I loved how you showed the templates too. So you can kind of go off the rails and create your own or you can use these beautifully designed templates that Canva has. You don't need to be a former graphic designer like myself to look like a graphic design pro. And that's what I love. Both tools are so easy to use and integrate. Um, I forget what the exact question was in there. Um, somebody had talked about doing uh, the newsletter as a website. You, you could totally do that and embed that. You could have students uh, reflect on their pieces with the moat response. And then you could track those in multiple pages and then have this be like uh, a mastery tracking report. So you could see what a student's maybe understanding and skill level was at the beginning of a unit or term and then track that at the end and then even have them embed a response. And something I would do when I was in the classroom was I would design about 80% of the student newsletter. And then I would leave a little section, a little write up and then a little space for a QR code or an embed for the student to include a reflection to the parent. And then we would send those off together. And that's when I got true readership. I went from, you know, about 5% of folks reading what I was putting out to about 70 to 80% because the students were so proud of that. There was this ownership and this uniqueness that just really skyrocketed that um, experience for everyone, myself included. And then you can even have a spot for parents to send a moat back to you within Canva and kind of reflect on your re reflection and get everybody involved. There you go, Scott. This, this Canva sounds like an amazing tool. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> yeah, no, it's um, no. Uh, I live, dream, sleep, uh canva like i literally do i love it so much i'd yeah. be using it even if they weren't paying me money um yeah. so it's really a childhood dream um i know stacy had mentioned her tedx talk about um you know equity in the classroom um just a quick small reflection on my story i wanted to be a part of a startup when i was 12 years old you know you get all of that kind of well-intentioned wisdom, like, hey, you know, it's really hard. You can't do it. It's a lot of work. And you know what? 20 plus years later, here I am doing it. So if you can dream it, you can do it, especially with Canva. There you go. There you go. What um what what a lovely message that is, Scott. And um and do you know what do you know what what I would definitely recommend that people do is and I'll put the um your your handles just on there again. Um, while Stacey and Scott were speaking about the ways that, you know, in Stacey's example of using demonstrating through Pear Deck and then the uh, Moat X Canva and obviously Scott speaking on behalf of Canva, that these two are not only there to speak to you about like one or two specific tools and indeed not even really about tools. And I think that that's something which is such an important realisation for so many is that people that are passionate about EdTech are not passionate about the tech. They're passionate about those things that you can do with the tech. And I know that when you, you know, when you when you hear people speaking, you can tell a difference between those that are on the kind of, you know, this is something that I've heard might be of use versus someone who can picture in their mind's eye. This is a teacher or a student that I may not work with now, but that I know if I was still with them, I'd be rushing into their classroom and helping them with their next lesson. So please connect with these two wonderful humans. Um, I would I would really, really encourage everyone to do that. Um, this is, as everyone knows, this is the last session of uh, MoatCon. I'd really be interested to know if if either of you have one or two takeaways. Uh, Stacey, if we start with you, that, that'd be great. Sure. Um, first of all, I think what was so, what I always love about educators and what this powerfully reminded me of is just like the generosity of the educator community. There were so many great sessions on such a variety of topics. Um, of course, I really appreciated that there was a ongoing theme of accessibility in 
through a lot of what people were talking about and also student choice, student voice. Um, I'm not gonna call out any one specific speaker because there were so many great ones and I really enjoyed all of the sharing and all of the generous sharing, um, the templates that were shared, the resources that were shared afterwards. I was blown away with some of the resources that I've gotten already that were just jam packed with not one example, not two examples, like <laughs> 20 different examples of things that people have put so much time into developing and designing. And then now they're sharing it forward because of their experiences. And I think that was just my favorite part of this conference was amazing people, amazing generosity of sharing. And also the, um, the chat in YouTube was wonderful. Mm. It was a wonderfully positive space. Thank you, Stacey. Have you got anything to add to that, Scott? That was a, that, that was a wonderful, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that was a great that. reflection. That's really hard to follow up, yeah. Stacey. <laughs> uh, as I was reflecting, uh, of course, the chat, there's almost just as much going on in the chat as there is in the session. And so sometimes I'm just going in the chat, like during your session, uh, Stacy, earlier on, and having like a, a whole nother related but tangential conversation. Uh, but before you, Tiffany had a great session and before her uh katie as well and uh definitely want to highlight katie because of her background uh you mentioned accessibility she's really a big advocate when it comes to that and then her role i think it often gets overlooked the rule of or role of school librarian that's so important like they are they do so much. They're like kind of the Swiss army knife of the school and they're underutilized in my opinion and definitely underappreciated. Uh, so think a librarian, support a librarian, involve a librarian. I had a great librarian when I was teaching secondary ELA and it was great. She would help me with all my research, uh, vet that. She would lead some sessions. We would talk about fake news and different things like how to just vet your resources, which is so important in how to properly cite things so that, you know, everything's above board and you're avoiding things like plagiarism. And um, one last piece, I just loved kind of like, I don't know if it's the right word, but the interoperability, essentially the app smashing, like just crazy app smash after mm -hmm. app smash, just, whoa, you can do so much with this tool and it's using the right tool for the right job. You mentioned, John, like, it's not just about ed tech. We're about people first, about skills and building people up those relationships through rapport first, and then choosing the right tech tool for the right job. So I think that's really important to keep in mind. And there's plenty of ideas. Go back through, watch these, rewatch these, let them really sink in and start applying them. Brilliant. Thank you both so much. So on behalf of everyone who's been in attendance at this session that's joined in the chat, uh, a huge thank you to, to you both. And please enjoy what's, rest, what, what's left, I should say, of your Saturday. Thank you, Stacey. And thank you, Scott. Bye for now. Thank you. Uh, thank you.